So today you are going to learn how to create your own new item and also how to propagate it to the retail point of sale to conduct your uh, demos. So we are going to create a new product. Uh, so basically we're going to go to products form which you can find under product information management and then products. So I'm going to click new and give it some number and this is going to be a cupcake. One word about the retail category, you could select one and it defaults the fields that are specific to this category. This is how we are able to create items really, really fast because it defaults the key fields for that specific group of items. For example, when you're creating t-shirts, uh, t-shirts usually have size like small and medium. So all of these additional attributes that are specific to t-shirts as opposed to shoes are inherited. And that inherited inherits probably half a dozen to dozen fields and greatly speeds up the setup of the new SKUs, which helps retailers who have thousands of SKUs. Then, um, this is a cupcake. What we need to fill in here are dimension groups. For the dimension group, we're going to say we're going to use a site in the warehouse. And for tracking dimension group, we are going to use none of these. So this is a very simple setup. No tracking dimensions, no serials, no batch numbers. Very simple item. Then we are going to release this product. So for companies who have multiple legal entities for various reasons, they keep this data separate and we are going to release it into our USRT company. This is where we will add additional data for this item definition. Now the operation is completed and this uh, product now is in release products. This is another form that we have in the system that has way more details, as you'll see in a second. In order to find this item, we are going to say 888, and this was the item number. So this is our cupcake that we have in here. So in here, actually this is the wrong form. We are going to go into product information management. and then go release products and still do 888 now we can go into the details of the item and in here we have to define a couple more fields for example what is really important is an item model group. So we're going to click edit and select an item model group. So item model group is what accountants care about. And this defines how we are consuming the items from the posting perspective. That matters on basically our financial results. And we have it per company just because different companies and different companies, uh, di different countries, they have specific requirements for this field. Another field which is important to fill in is a unit of measure. And unit of measure is how we purchase these items and we may purchase them in pallets, boxes, etc. We're going to make it easier for this item and it's going to be just in eaches. We're going to specify also price for this item, let's say $3. And then we're going to proceed to the sell side. So also going to sell them in eaches. And we are going to specify a price in here. And the price is going to be, let's say, $6. And then we're going to manage the inventory. 
this signifies when we are doing inventory operations for example counting in which units of measures are we going to do this and we again going to do this in eaches then another thing that we will signify here is the cost of items and the cost of items let's say it's going to be 310 so we're gonna have a cost slightly higher than the purchase price because it takes a little bit of time to and the cost to transport the items to receive them to stock them so we're going to bump up the cost a little bit then we also have a retail tab uh, we actually don't need to specify anything right now on this tab but it has plenty of interesting fields that we have here uh, for example valid from and valid to which restricts when are we able to sell the item so for now we're not going to fill any anything in here you're going to learn all about these fields further now that we have defined an item we uh, have to define where the item is available in order to do this we have to include the, uh, an item to an assortment assortments govern which items are available where so for example your neighborhood store typically has less items than a big box store so in this case we have a couple of assortments already defined in the demo data and we're just going to piggyback on this we're going to include this item into a fashion assortment and we're going to say 88 and save it once we save it it's not actually enough we also have to publish it publishing an assortment makes sure that all of these various channels stores are actually getting this data that this item now belongs to this channel uh, and here although it's not evidently clear that our Houston store that we have activated the device for belongs to these channels but it does trust me for now we're gonna investigate why this actually will go to a Houston store at a later lesson now that we have included the item to the store we will go back and actually validate this the that the item is included in there so we're going to go to uh, released product we're going to find our item and in here under related information you're going to see retail channels and operating units and our Houston store that's all we care about right now then let's also set the image for the product we're going to need this knowledge a little bit later so there are two ways to do this so we're going to create a new image in here and we are going to choose a file this makes sure that on the headquarters side and also in the call center we're getting this image right then there is an additional um, parameter to set which is a media gallery and the media gallery that uh, defines how our point of sale is getting all these information uh, so we are going to find a picture of a cupcake on a URL so typically um, the content management system will dump all these into a folder for now we're just going to pick one image from a URL so what we'll do we'll add a new URL in here and and paste it here and then click OK not that the URL should start with HTTP usually it just frowns on HTTPS and then we are going to just delete 
the other ones just because they don't make any sense for now so this is what is going to be displayed on the catalog at the point of sale and we're gonna mark it as default so now we have to do a couple of more things which is to send this data to the point of sale our point of sale is offline capable so for example when you have a modern point of sale on the Windows device it is able to have its own SQL database that's why we have a wonderful mechanism to send this data in a batch mode and we are going to go to distribution distribution schedule in here you see um, a lot of jobs and we care about definition of prices now to get this data to the point of sale we must run a couple of jobs first we are going to run a price job and then the system will take a minute I can run another form uh, in a separate browser tab and I can run a products job in here then um, typically I also run the job that includes all the other jobs just in case I missed something which happens sometimes so this is job 999 and I also will run it just in case so you could check the status of the job by clicking history and in the history what is important is that when the job is run it will have a status of applied and here um, we see that this job is now applied so most likely the the item definition and the price definition is already on its way or already at the point of sale so if we come back to the point of sale what we could do is we could ring up this item so let's see what happens and the system recognizes oh it's a cupcake and it costs six dollars and I'm going to go and pay cash and let's say out of ten the system instructs me to give four back and just like this we were able to sell the item we have just created at the point of sale so in the next lesson we're going to learn about the pricing and promotions so stay tuned for that and subscribe for new updates